I thought today, um, being St. Patrick's Day, we'd talk a little bit about his legacy, a little bit about the legend that is St. Patrick. Um, they simply had no way of getting here. Um, so you have to look at, so why was St. Patrick uh, being heavenly hailed as the hero uh, as, from banishing snakes from, from, um, from Ireland? Well, some believe that the snake was a symbol of paganism and it was the St. Patrick who was accredited for ridding Ireland of paganism and bringing Christianity to the Emerald Isle. So, so what you find is that on today, I wanted to draw a little bit of comparison between St. Patrick and plastic pollution. So what do we know about, so now that we know a little bit more about St. Patrick, I want to talk to you a little bit about plastic pollution. So the first and most important point that I want to get across is that I must emphasize that our consumption of plastics is very much at unsustainable proportions presently. And plastic isn't our enemy. It's not our enemy. Microplastics, plastic particles less than five millimeters, can come from the breakdown of plastic objects, car tires, clothing, but also from their use in cosmetics and other applications. They are, are diverse shape and encompass a suite of chemical and biological constituents. Microplastics can enter the human body through ingestion and inhalation, and they've been taken up in various organs that might affect health, for example, by damaging cells and introducing inflammatory and immune reactions. Plastics enter the environment through many guises, from many sources. Some of them are accidental loss during waste collection. Some of them are from landfills. Some of them are from general littering. Some of them are from runoff and losses from waste processing. But micro and nanoparticulates can be shed from also larger projects, such as through abrasion of car tires and pavement. Essentially, our problem gets bigger as the plastics get smaller. So some 80% of the microplastics in wastewater are synthetic fibers as well, many of which are shed by clothing when we wash our clothes in the washing machine. Some microplastics and likely nanoplastics work their way through um, into rivers and oceans unhindered by wastewater treatment. And th these particles that are captured eventually find their way onto land as part of sewage sludge or in ingested by marine critters as part of the arterial networks of rivers and streams that flow to the oceans. But I must, I must emphasize that plastic isn't the enemy and we desperately need every idea, every avenue, every solution to tackle and deal with this problem. And it starts with the individual. Here's an example of research done by the University of Exeter uh, that shows microscopic beads um, in, uh, in, in microscopic marine plankton, the basis of the food chain in the ocean. These are facial personal care cosmetic plastic material used in cleaning our faces or personal care cosmetic um, uh, products. And while in the UK, these have been banned for a number of years, here's an example of how our direct behavior has an impact on the very foundation that forms the food chain for the oceans. Again, it's, it's, it's which we are involved. It's worth thinking about that. Take a moment to think about the plastics have affected the very foundation of the ocean's food chains. So what are we going to do? Well, and how does St. Patrick involve? Well, St. Patrick was a change agent. He believed in something. He believed he could make a difference. He acted on the change and became that agent of change. And change is a law of life. They say, and those who look only to the past and present are certain to miss the future. So the greatest discovery of all time is that a person can change his future by merely changing his attitude. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. And there are many examples of this. Some thoughtful, committed citizens uh, have some memorable change quotes, which you see on the screen here now. And they represent Gandhi, they represent Albert Einstein, they represent George Bernard Shaw, and they represent even Steve Jobs. Some of these you'll be familiar with, others will be new to you, um, but it's the behavior is still the same. These committed citizens made change. Um, apologies, went on there too far, went change. So although St. Patrick has lived 15 centuries ago, um, I want, and, and you're, you must wonder how he can help us with plastic. I'm here today asking everybody to do more, do much more, do as much as you can, do more and more and manage what you can manage. Start in your homes, what you buy, change your behaviors and how you manage your plastic footprint. The old saying of a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step.
Start the journey and manage your plastic footprint. At home, try to reduce your plastic usage. Recycle more and more, but most importantly, pick up the plastic as you bin it. The pollution pathways are well recorded on how plastics get into the marine environment and our food chain. You have to remember who's at the top of the food chain. When outside, get into the habit of picking up three pieces a day, four pieces a day, five pieces a day. You, you can see where this is going. You can do the maths, but we must stop plastic entering the environment. You need to create the change in your behavior bit by bit. Start small and, and make it part of your daily habit to pick up plastic and put it in the bin. Stop the flow of plastics that are in the environment and cumulatively, if every human on the planet picked up just three pieces of plastics a day, that would make a huge difference. You can do the maths. But just before I go, I wanted to introduce you to another famous Irishman, uh, Pete St. John. Now, Pete wrote a song uh, that most people will know uh, called, um, uh, the, be called The uh, Fields of Athenry. Uh, the very, very, uh, uh, very, very well known Irish anthem. But Pete also wrote a song be called uh, Waltzing on Borrowed Time. The lyrics have swung by there, but I'd like you to investigate looking into Waltzing on Borrowed Time because Pete is an agent of change. He's written a very fantastic song that element that shows the difference on the issues that we're, we're, we're facing and how we are actually waltzing on borrowed time. So a final thought just before I go, in summary, if you bear with me. Um, so in summary, we'd all need know, we all know the impact of plastics have on our environment and ourselves. Plastics in our environment are changing life. They're pushing the evolution of new detrimental habitats, creating new pathways and transport mechanisms for species who exploit these new habitats and are aided in the movement and distribution, affecting new areas by the day. In light of this, I wanted to share the picture on the screen there in the middle, and everybody will probably recognize it. It's COVID-19, and the impact it's had on the world has been, has been horrible. You, the surface of plastic is known to be a colonizer for bacteria and viruses, aiding their movements on a global coverage. Think about this. If we had less plastic in the environment, there would be no opportunities for bacteria and viruses to survive and spread to our ecosystems. Have a think. Are plastics a transport mechanism for viruses and help to spread them, especially with COVID-19 and antimicrobial resistance, AMR, which is a really important topic too as well. Over the last year, there's an estimated 1.56 billion face masks have entered the oceans. And this will result in additional 6,000 metric tons of marine plastic entering the oceans due to COVID-19. And they last for anything up to 450 years, slowly turning into microplastics, which negatively, negatively impact the marine wildlife and ecosystem. The same report uh, used a global conservative estimate of 52 billion uh, metric tons, uh, about, uh, 52 billion polypropylene face masks with an average weight of three to four grams. And that is conservative. So you have to understand that these face masks break down and as a polypropylene is the same fragment you find and also in wet wipes. The 1.56 billion face masks that will likely enter the ocean 2020 are just the tip of the iceberg. The 6,000 metric tons of face masks that are just a fraction of the estimated 8 to 12 million metric tons of plastic that enter our ocean each year. Finally, polypropylene plastics fragment, as I said, and they carry infections and they cause harm to global flora and fauna. This is a new threat to us on top of an ever existing threat of plastic in the marine environment. And we must get a handle on it and we must all play our part. But one thing is for sure, if you're not already absolutely terrified, terrified by what the impact of plastic has on our oceans and COVID-19 and how it affects the effects it has on us and our civilization, you should be. Be that agent of change now. Thank you very much.